everything in my house growing up was a Republican's fault. Everything. Everything was a conservative's fault. Ooh. Growing up in a, in a white liberal household, it was like, vote Obama. I said, why? Because he's black. I said, what, you, what does that mean? Y'all was the president. Nobody that checked on me had to invest in me. I got the recipe, Mr. Krabs. I just been cooking up in the lab. Chris. What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? Blessed and highly favored, my man. That's great, man. God is great. Yes, he is. Let me tell you something, brother. You're like an extremely, like over the last 12, 13 years on social media, you've been nonstop, foot on the gas. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, man, that's kind of been my thing. I appreciate you noticing for sure. Like when everyone, um, you know, like I've been building this house brick by brick and social media, like I've been like 10 years ago, I was compared to these people that I, that I never really wanted to be compared to. I'm competitive though. So I'm like, all right, you know, yeah. boom, one year later, they're comparing me to people I never heard of. Ah. Boom. A year later, they're doing it again. So I, I've been compared to so many people that, you know, didn't withstand the test of time. And they were bigger than me, guys that yeah. were always bigger than me and more successful than me and even more talented than me. But um, they weren't they were never working harder than me. I'm always I'm always the first to the gym and last to leave. You know what I mean? I love that. That's what that's Kobe's story. That's on that's on my man um, arm right there. Have you ever hey, met? I got, I got that joint tatted. I got oh, that no. mentality. What's up, Lou? Yeah, man, that's What's what I'm good, all about. Right? That's, that's what I'm about. That's what I'm about is just uh, because I met a lot of people like I used to work with. Um, and this is no disrespect, but I used to work with a uh, Riff Raff and I toured with him for a while. And he was the one that that I mean, maybe he'll tell you, too. I don't know. But he was the one where I was like, OK, he's clearly not the best. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> but he but he but he was relevant for a, a long period of time, whether it was, you know, for com comedy or, or social media or, or whatever. And so it, so it really had me thinking. I was like, all right. So this guy's clearly, you know, working hard in some way because it's not, you know, the, it's not the lyrical skills. And um, you know, it's, it's not the lyrical skills, <laughs> you know, it's not it's not the production, whatever it is, you know, it wasn't. And I was like, it wasn't just the brand. So I was like, OK, so this guy must be working hard at something. And, and um, that that really got me thinking. And that's how I kind of figured it out is um, just working harder than the next man. Let me tell you something. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen my hashtag that I have on my videos. You might not might not have. But let me tell you what it is. It's outwork yesterday because a lot of times people get stuck. I, I heard in a couple of your um your songs because I tried to do a, a cram and I was like, oh, my freaking God, this was for the last week, to be honest with you. But mostly today, and I ain't even going to lie to you, Um, but I tried to cram my my mind full of um high res content just to see what he was really about and let me tell you something man you went through some things you took your fans through some things through some parts of your life where you know one time you was talking about drugs and and and, and money and and right just cussing your ass off yeah yeah i'm still, yeah. A, I'm still a cussing christian by the way so yeah, yeah. hopefully i don't disrespect you <laughs> <laughs> now nah, I'm, I'm on the same type of wave bro as far as uh you know my, my wife now i say wife she she's still um, out here while and you know trying to why did you say that why did you say this and uh, it's like yo but my heart was in it <laughs> <laughs> hey congratulations on being married brother that's thank you amazing I appreciate you yeah but nah but um as far as uh, a, a cussing religious type of dude you know I, I'm trying my best to uh, to be a better man than yesterday but but my heart's always in it and I'm always trying to do the right thing and and be better than I was yesterday and I'm always trying to do right by by God and, and my and the people around me. Let me tell you something. It's the intent, bro. Um, it's the intent. And I was uh, I was looking, I was listening to some of your music. Um, and it was one joint that the hook was fired. Before we're done talking, I'm gonna bring that joint up. It was mm. like, oh my gracious, what did it say? God dang it! I was in the car driving, saying this joint over and over and over again. I promise you. Mm. And it was just on point. But one thing that I notice is, um, because Eminem is my number two all time favorite rapper. Wait, who, who your number one? Yeah, I gotta whisper it. Who better than Eminem? Oh, no, not it's not who better. It's my it's my it's my perspective. It's my goddamn list, man. It's not I'm who, just who better. I'm just asking. Why, 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 it's, 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 it's Biggie Smalls. There you okay. go. That's my number one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Biggie Smalls, man. I got his picture right there. That's my guy. But my number three is um um Fifty Cent. All right. <laughs> I mean, you know, but that's only because of work ethic. That's only because of work ethic. That's it. Mm. That's only because my, let me tell you something. His work ethic matches my guy right here. I'm trying to tell you, bro. Dang. I don't know if you've seen your, your, okay. Okay. <laughs> let me stop. Fast over this bitch. Man, we, we, we know. Thank you. Nah, but seriously though, man, because when I started doing reactions, the one thing that set me apart was me doing driving reactions. Right. 
So I went and checked you out and I was like, whoa, I've seen these before. This right. dude is doing Uber rats. In the south that I live in, the liquor and pills are just way too appealing. I am not willing or able to stop. Call up the cops, call up my mom. I got a problem. I am a slipping. I think I need God. Right. <laughs> you know, and getting 30 million on the videos. That changed my life, man. Yeah. Um, before that, I mean, you probably, I don't know if you looked into it. I did the McDonald's rap many years ago. Let me get two Big Macs and two apple pies. A little bit of Sprite in the side of fries. Let me get a McDouble. Let me get a McChicken. 2015, and I went to Times Square, and I did that. And that one got like 300 million views on Facebook, oh my which changed gosh. my life, bro. It's one of the biggest Facebook videos of all time still. Um, it got almost 100 million on YouTube, but the kid, um, I, I'm not even going to get into it, but he took it down for like some some sort of issues on his end. It was, it was a little bit of whatever and uh, but still collectively that video got hundreds of millions of views i was always doing these kind of gimmicky things and um, they, that was kind of a way to lead my audience to my to my music and uh, it would always get way more views than my music but i figured it was like casting a big net you know so it's like whoever you catch as a fan that's incredible and, and that's really always been my kind of my mo until recently until the last couple of years and i was like all right you know like i feel like i have an audience um i kind of got sick of doing the uber stuff and doing the pranks and doing the gimmicky stuff and it was just kind of like hurting my soul creatively because it wasn't it wasn't it was too easy you know what i mean yeah. like i enjoy doing stuff that's obviously like who like i like making money obviously I, you know i like pleasing my audience but if i'm not really having fun you know drake said the moment i stop having fun with it i'll be done with it and um that's how that's how it was for me and what, what, as far as the uber ones and as far as you know kind of the gimmicky stuff it's not to say i won't do it in the future but i feel like i, I could put out like you know an original video and music you know song and get you know four or five hundred thousand views and and a million streams across the platforms and i could sell five hundred six seven hundred t-shirts when i Easy. when i put out a new song and shit like that and i feel like i reached a point like a like new levels you know new devils type of scenario where obviously i'm dealing with new stuff but um ultimately i feel like i'm i'm like i feel like i reached a new a new level and a new height where i i'm comf i'm comfortable and confident you know putting out music um and just kind of having fun with it right now and you know i kind of go through cycles as a creator and as a creative but um that's where i'm at now man i'm just having fun putting out kind of whatever i want to do and i'm not really i'm not really worried about who i offend or or who whose respect i i get or keep thank you, know you. I mean? yeah i don't really care who what fan falls off or you know what fan new fan even even from the degree of what new fan comes in like i'm kind of real tunnel vision with it like like love could turn to hate real quick so you know i and i'm not, that's not saying i don't appreciate support it's just more like it's like I'm just locked in, bro. You know what I mean? Like I, like I, I don't even. I don't, I'm not even. I'm not. I'm not trying to get like jaded by the. You know, I'm not trying to get side sidetracked by the support. Oh my god, look how much support I have. This is so incredible. Because I used to do that all the time when I was 16. I couldn't believe I had a million views and I had a, whatever 50,000 people watching this, this, and this. And this was early on on YouTube. I remember I was trending on YouTube with only 15,000 views in a day, 10,000 views in a day, because no one was on YouTube, you know what oh, I mean? Gracious. This was like 2009, 2010. I was one of the first YouTubers like around YouTube You're rappers. OG YouTuber. Nah, that is you're crazy. super, super OG, bro. That's Thank crazy. You. Thank you, man. And, and it's, it was so early on that, I don't know how, how far y'all back go, how far y'all go into the YouTube days, but it was like, it was only me and then a bunch of Asian rappers from like Canada. <laughs> That's it. It was um, it was me and Timothy De La Ghetto and yeah. uh, and D Pride and J Rise and all these dudes and um, you know to to be able to even compete with some of these guys and put numbers up and kind of be like you know nowadays you throw a stone in in your neighborhood or your building you'll you'll run into ten rappers you know right. what I mean back in the day 10, 12, 13 years ago I was the only white rapper rapper in general within a hundred miles one hundred fifty miles two hundred fifty miles so. You know, it was it was it was less saturated. It was less competition. It was less watered down, and there was already kind of a built-in audience. So when I was putting out music, this was kind of the first level of comparisons I was getting. They were like, first of all, I didn't go to college, so I was like, how could I be frat rap? That's what they called me. They called ah. me fraternity. <laughs> and I said, I said, wait a minute, and and I used to pride myself in it because I didn't go to school, and I was like, yeah, I'm really committed to this craft, and like they're comparing me to these kids that are like, you know, partying, that are like five, six years older than me, and they're like, yo, you sound like Mike Stud, you sound like, you know, uh, Cam Meekins, you sound like Huey Mack, you sound like whatever, blah 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 blah, and I love all these guys. This is not a shot at them. I'm just saying that was the first comparison I started getting, and it's, it made me hustle, it made me work. And uh, fast forward, you know, I, I kind of outgrew that box, and then like you said, I kind of. Got more experimental with 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 the drugs and and life and, and depression kind of hit me you know for a few years and and uh, that I really like you said I really took my fans on a on a journey with me and I still do to this day where you know each each mixtape at the time y'all remember Dat Piff yes oh yeah so oh, yeah. 
I was 16 years old and I put out um, a project on Dat Piff and it got 50,000 downloads. Y'all know what a download is now back in the day. So yeah. you had to download it, unzip it, plug your iPod in, extract it. So to me, like, you know, the fact that I, I was really out here like selling mixtapes type type scenario and getting 50, I have one with over 100,000 downloads. So it's incredible to me to be able to be on iTunes and stream and get all this money. But I also know that, you know, 99% of these rappers nowadays would not survive in, in even the era before streaming. You know what I At mean? At all. Nah, it wouldn't happen. Yeah. It's too it's too easy now to make money. It's too easy now to get fans. You like you were what? there from like the beginning, beginning, like we talking old nine, like you said, there was really nobody really there. What 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 is your opinion now, like on like YouTube the platform? Um, how much has changed? Because YouTube the platform in 09 versus yeah. YouTube the platform in twenty twenty three. Yes, right. sir. I we mean, no you've ads. seen it all. You've seen the adpocalypse. Yeah. You've seen everything, bro. Everything. Like. The, Dude, there was no ads. So when I was on YouTube, they're, they're, they didn't even have partnerships yet. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm sure they were working it out. And I'm sure that, you know, maybe there was something going on, but like no one had ads. And like, I, I remember seeing that pop up and, and it was real cool to obviously, you know, go from making $0 a month to $200 a month. You know what I mean? $150 a month and just getting some sort of ad sense. And I was like, all right, this is cool. But like you said, fast forward to now, you know, it's night and day, bro. Like, you know, just like anything, it's gonna, it's gonna get eaten up and, 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 you know, um, you know, corporations are going to come in. And as soon as you start taking, you know, part like, uh, you know, revenue from McDonald's and Pepsi, and uh, I'm not going to say any other medical names, but as soon as you start taking, you know, the, 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 the top dogs and you start taking money from there, there's expectations. Right. You know what I mean? Just like if I took money from you and, and, and you're expecting a return on your investment, but these are much deeper when you're talking billions of dollars, it's, there's now an agenda and motivations and, and there, it's less like, I don't need my money back. You know what I mean? It's more like, Hey, I need you to say this and do this and preach this. But when I was, um, six, uh, 18, 19, I was signed to Sony and, um, you know, this was before what? streaming. Yeah. This was before streaming. And I actually got dropped from Sony because Spotify came out and they're like, yo, you only sold a few thousand copies of a record. First of all, to sell a few thousand copies at 18, 19 years old at a $10 album, bro. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm fre I didn't go to college. You know what I mean? Like I said, all my homies are in college and I just generated 30 or 40 K off of, off of a, my first, you know, uh, EP or whatever it was at the time. And um, so looking back, I'm very proud of what I did, but I'm also so hyped that they dropped me because six, seven months, nine months later, whatever, they were old. They were like dinosaurs and I respect them to this day, but they were just kind of very out of touch. It was like a division under Sony and um, they were they were very out of touch. And and then streaming came up and I remember getting my first streaming check and I was like, word, I was like, ah. you could, I, I, I was like, you could get paid every month for doing music. And I was like, yo, I remember seeing my first my first check was like five hundred dollars. And this was like twenty. 14 maybe so so I, at this point i'm doing music six seven years and i never i never made a dollar like you know every everything that i made was going back into the business or i lost money or i signed a deal where i never recouped the advances or whatever it was always situations like that and i remember just seeing that first check where it was only five six hundred bucks and I, and I understood how it worked now because i was like i put out music i got money i put out music i got money and i remember just seeing that change where like even back in the day, bro, if we're talking, you know, before YouTube, like you said, a Lil Wayne or anyone, a Drake, it doesn't matter. They weren't even making money from, from like, you know what I mean? They were making money from merch and touring. Yeah, don't, touring. Get, don't, get, don't get me wrong. Like they're, they're still selling a million albums, but when you're dealing with a label, they weren't really eating off the music like that. The music was the catalyst to go out and sell out shows and make a million dollars every time you went and sold merchandise and mixtapes and CDs and whatever, blah, 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 blah. But, um, you know, when music became less of a catalyst and more of the moneymaker, that's when things started to change. Now, um, you wrote you did another video that that really impressed me, man. But it just shows that over the years you got a little you got a little upset. You you started to see certain things. You know, it's just a part of maturity. You started to notice certain things. Um, you started to notice that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ten years ago, I was talking about drugs, this, that, and the other. And you guys accept it. You will mm. pay for it for yeah. me to do that. And as a matter of fact, it will be far more successful if I do that. But when I start talking about God and country, whoa, ho, oh, what you doing talking about that? Now I'm crazy. Yeah. Now people are like, yo, you all right, bro? You good? Right. So so when I was younger, so I'm I'm from New York. Um, and and I always I always kind of prided myself in being being New York. And hold up, though, Rez. Hold up, yeah. Rez. What part of New York you from, bro? I, so, so I say Bronx, and people are like, "Oh, you're not from the Bronx," because I'm from River. I'm from Riverdale in the Bronx, which is. Oh, I, I, not, I'm from the Bronx. I'm in the Bronx right now, bro. So I know exactly what you told. So me. I, that's why I figured. I figured. I figured. Can't we, jack we, that. 
<laughs> not from the Bronx, you can't jack it. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So uh, from Riverdale, a nice area, a nice Jewish area in the Bronx, and and that's where I grew up, or not not grew up, but that's where I was born, and 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 I lived there for a little bit, and then I moved out to Florida. But once again, I really prided myself in in being hip hop and being from New York and being about the culture and being and like I'm a fan, bro. I'm a fan of hip hop, like first and foremost, and then. You know, like you said, as soon as, well, for, let me backtrack. So I was so used to like being like when they were like, yo, you're from the South. I'm like, I'm not Southern. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, 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 start, I started kind of taking that to heart. And then, and then I, and then I, and then I was like, all right. And then, and every, everyone was kind of boxed in. So when you heard a Southern rap, it was Paul Wall. It was Mike Jones. It was Slim Thug. And I was like, I don't sound like that at all. You know, I, if you listen to my early music, it was always East Coast or, or, or inspired right. by something, right? right? It was always, it was always inspired by some sort of East Coast artist. And I worked with a lot of East Coast, like, oh, geez, I'll mention that after that a lot of people don't even know. And um, that's when I was signed with Sony. But a lot of New York OGs. And um, so I really prided myself in, in being cu cultured and about hip hop and stuff like that. And then as soon as, like I said, my eyes started opening, the first thing for me from a side note was I remember when um, kind of everyone gave 6 9 that pass and they were like, yo, he could do whatever he wants and said whatever he wants and his fans still don't care. Like, And I was like, all right, this is a little weird because I'm used to like, um, like when Ja Rule's career ended from 50 Cent and them. I'm used to like what you say matters and what you don't say matters and what you do and don't do and if you're talking on records and you're lying on wax like i'm used to that that's that's not necessarily the era i'm from but that's from the era that i learned so this is what i learned so i would so i'd make sure i never lied on record and i really took the craft thank personal. you thank you thank you and uh, i really took the craft personal but you might not like where i'm headed but it's, it is what it is i'll tell you why so the next one was Lil yachty didn't know biggie smalls and no one cared and yeah, i was did, and i did. and i was like what word so I started, you know, I got, I got to the point in the last few years where, you know, I'm, I'm almost in my thirties, but, but let's, let's talk the last few years. I'm, I'm in my mid twenties to thirties now. And, um, I started looking around and I'm like, yo, like I, I lost a lot of time caring about the respect of people, even if it's hip hop, right. even if it's old heads, even if it's, and I, and, and I wasn't focused on the craft and I wasn't focused on the brand and I wasn't focused on the, the music as much because I was so focused on, yo, I want to be accepted in hip hop and I want to be accepted in the culture and I want to be accepted by these rappers. And most of the time they, they rocked with me just because when we linked up and we met, they're like, oh, he's a cool kid. He's really about this. He really loves hip hop, blah, 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 blah. I have so many stories of touring with Everyone from, like I said, from the Riff Raffs to Corey Guns to King Los to I toured with everyone who's underground to toured with big guys and done shows with big guys like back in nice. the day, MGK and Wale and Waka Flocka. And this was before, you know, this is when you had to perform. You could like people nowadays, they just stay in their crib and put out music. They don't even leave their house anymore. You know what I mean? You didn't done it all, though. You didn't rocked with them with all of the heavy hitters. What? Like, I will be content. Like, man, I've done everything. Man, I'm chilling. I ain't working hard no more. So as soon as as soon as I changed my tune on not really caring about respect anymore, bro. And, and, and you know, I, I've always been that way when it comes to like fans or haters. It's like, I don't really care what you think about me, whether you love me or hate me, I'm gonna be me. But I never really kept that same energy when it came to like producers or magazines. Back in the day, you had to get write-ups from XXL and Vibe right. and Source and all these things. So I had to be like a little puppet and tap dance in these offices. And like, I had to go around and like, you know, kiss these people's ass and like, just be like, yo, please, will you do a write-up on me, sir? And it's like, you know, this is the era I'm from. So I was like trained to care, bro. Like I was trained to to like to conduct myself accordingly if that makes sense and like you know button my suit before i, I walked it. in 100%. so as soon as i kind of threw that out and i was like wait a minute i started acknowledging especially the last few years i'm like people actually respect just saying what you want even if they disagree with it and even if they're not gonna rock with you no more you're gonna find your tribe your vibe's gonna attract your tribe and i'm like yo let me just be me do me say everything on my mind because I know, like like you said earlier, I know my heart's in the right place. I know I'm a good guy. I know I, I genuinely walk correctly and I love and accept everybody in all walks of life. Right. So I say, wait, what am I What am I fearful of? Am I fearful of being called a bigot, racist, homophobe? Oh, 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 you a culture vulture. Bro, I know where I'm, I know there where I come go. from. That's I know, another I, one. I know my story. I know where I come from and, 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 and I know hip hop like the back of my hand, bro. So it's like, you know, I, no one could school me on this thing. So as soon as I kind of threw that out, everything started changing for me, bro. And, and things just started clicking. I, I want that, I want to get into the um, I love that. My bad, Van. I want to get into the uh, to the culture vulture thing, uh, thing because I've noticed that <laughs> when you're a white rapper, right? Not just a rapper, but you're a white rapper. You right. really face this uh, accepting thing like uh, people never want to give you as much credit. 
mm-hmm. because you're white and because you're a culture vulture. Uh, what was your experience with that sentiment, especially in the hip hop community? Because I'm pretty sure, you know, when you did see Six Nine and the Lil Yachty, you're like, man, what the, man, yeah. this hip hop game is trash, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. y'all really not about what y'all talking about. Yep. You see it now with this whole street culture thing where it's being exposed, like people really don't care. But I, I kind of want to get your experience on the, on the whole hip hop thing and, and then being, I guess, quote unquote, a white rapper in the in the industry. Yeah. So. Like I said, being being like in this, I'm not gonna say oh, I'm in the streets. I'm on the streets, but but I was around a lot of thorough dudes a lot, and like and and I was accepted very often in almost every circle and every setting I went, um, because like I said, I carried myself accordingly, and 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 I knew how to move in almost every scenario. And early on, like I was just around certain people. And I realized, like, I started losing friends to to gang violence. I started losing friends to overdosing, wow. you know, whether it was lean, whether it was perks. And I started seeing kind of hip hop portray that that's a cool thing now with the newer guys. And I was like, yo, this is a bad kind of full circle moment that I'm experiencing. And I started losing friends on a personal level. Um, I lost my cousin in a shooting. I lost, that's a wow. school shooting. That wasn't gang related, but I'm saying I lost a lot of scenarios back to back to back. And then Mac Miller, who who I knew, um, we weren't friends, but I knew him personally. And, and he yeah. was a big inspiration of mine. Then he died. That and would I, surprise me. That one hit me hard, man, yeah. just because I saw myself in, you know, like 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 my career was really not started, but really continued because of a guy like him and my cousin pass and and being from Broward, wow. um, you know, XXX pass. And this is all in the span of like a year or two. And then things just started, you know, before this little peep, I, I didn't know much about him, but I just started seeing all these crazy things go down. And it's like when you look left and you see all these people dying and you look right and you see all these people dying and you realize that you're next. You know what I mean? So that was a big change for me. But as far as... um. You know, that goes back to what you just asked me as far as being white in hip hop. I cared a lot early on, like I said, but I never really saw myself as a, as a white rapper. I just was like, hey, I, I love rap. And, you know, if people put that label on me, I, I actually didn't mind it because, you know, look at Eminem. He's probably the big he's probably the biggest, most lucrative thing to happen in hip hop ever. The you know biggest what I mean? ever. I agree. As far as as far as <laughs> money goes, as far as branding, as far as like pushing, you know, to the mainstream, to to everybody, bro. Like, don't get me wrong. There was a major uh, amount of events. But as far as lucrative, as far as brand and money goes, I mean, Eminem was probably the biggest brand in hip hop. You know, I don't know about now, but historically. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, when they, when they were like. Yo, you, you you sound like Eminem. I'm like, he's rich. What do I care? You know exactly. what I mean? <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah. Yo, you sound like blah 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 blah. I'm like, and, and if it was like someone who, who, like I said, was more of a peer of mine, I took it personal and I said, all right, watch me out rap this guy, watch me beat this guy, and I said it behind the closed doors, and then I and then I did it. So you know, when they compare me, they, someone said the other day, they're like, yo, you a wannabe of Eminem and Dr. Dre and Ja Rule, and they start naming all these whatever it is. These are some nonsense. I just made those names up. My point is, they just started naming all these names. I said, yo, that sounds like a billion dollar company. It does. It does. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Who else? Thank you. Playing chess, playing chess, not checkers, man. That's Absolutely. the longevity and, of it. And, um, to say that, you know what I mean? You're talking to who's saying that? Is this other rappers who are doing better than you? No, no, no. It's not the case. Yeah, it's never rappers. Yeah, and I've it's never had never someone, rappers. I've never had someone more successful than me or better looking than me. Bro, or, uh, <laughs> talk your shit, bro. I'm sorry. No, talk no, your shit. I, 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 I've, tea, bro. I've never, I've never had somebody um, in a scenario that's better off than me, whether it's, like I said, health, you know what I mean? That no one's no one's in the gym genuinely. Like you might be bigger than me, but they're inspiring you to work harder. So there's never there's there's never been a scenario where someone's is is more well off than me, or like I said, like look anything where they're like, yo, you really that's you're not killing it, bro. Cause cause no one does that. Cause if you in that scenario, you're not really in that scenario. You know what I mean? Like you're not really confident, you're not really healthy, you're not really making money if you care about somebody who's making money, you know. It well, was I'm, definitely a, li- a liberal for sure. Was hating. <laughs> So it's crazy. So let's talk. <laughs> let's talk about that word, man. Let's talk about that word. So, yes, I was just about to ask him about that because, dude, uh, hip hop is pretty much uh, it's very weird sport. It's, so it's very speak. weird, man. It's very weird because we came from an era of fight the power, right? Yes. Like where it was, and, yes. and w- whether you agree with it or not, and you got after police, and you got all these songs that it was. It was more. It was like anthems, and it was like really fight music, and it was like really retaliation, and like you know real power to the people type music and it really made sense and it worked and now i feel like we're at an overcorrection in society my friend zuby said this um recently to me and he was telling me this scenario where he was like you know like we kind of peaked in the early 2000s as a culture as a society where he was like 
people are just bored now and we're over civilized where people are looking for issues. They're looking for social issues and social problems because we're humans. We need to solve and rationalize everything. It's almost like we're robots, but in a, in a, in a much more intellectual way where we need to solve and compute and fix things and, and find things. And when there's nothing to fix, we're going to go start cherry picking things to fix. You know what I mean? Right, right. But let, let's talk about the word. Me and my wife always kind of, um, you know, debate the word liberal versus um, oh. pro versus progressive versus Progre leftist. Progressive, liberal, Left. all that stuff. Like, <laughs> so check this out. So, so if you, I don't know how far back you looked, but I had a record called It's All Love. And I still stand on this. And I had a record called It's All Love. You, my sisters and my brothers. It doesn't matter your religion and your color. We should all be free to love who we love and be free from the hatred and judgment of others. And it was like a whole thing where it was like a, a conservative and, a, you know, and, and, a, and, a, and a liberal. And they were like kind of uh, helping each other fix a car. It was like real corny, like as far as the video goes. Um, you know, it was like it was like obvious. Right. And like I would, like I, I stand on that hill. Like I, like I was I meant that I don't put out a record out to get views or get money. And it was like and then it showed like a lesbian couple and then it showed um, you know, like, so, like I said, it showed all these, it showed a Jew and a Muslim playing basketball together. Very wholesome. Like all these wholesome, it was, it was like a, like one of those commercials that's really like virtue signaling now. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, but this, yeah. this was like, this was back in the day. This was, you know, seven, six, seven years ago. So my point is, is I come from this world <laughs> where everything in my house growing up was a Republican's fault. Everything, everything was a conservative's fault. Ooh, that's everything. a New York thing. That's a yeah, super yeah, New York 100%, thing. 100%, <laughs> bro. Everything was, you know, blaming Bush. And, and looking back, I'm not a fan of Bush at all. But my point is, is like, it was more than that. It was like, because he's, not because he's a warmonger, not because of the things I don't like about him, you know, not because, uh, you know, all this corruption. It's more because like, because he's on the other team. That's why we got to hate him. You know what I mean? Right, right, so I, right. I was raised to be, you know, a Democrat and a liberal and, um, you know, my mom, you know, once again, growing up in a, in a white liberal household, it was like, vote Obama. I said, why? Because he's black. I said, what, you, what does that mean? Ah. <laughs> so what does that even mean? It's like, just because. And like, that's I'm it. like, that's Shit. it. I'm like, all right, you know, I, I never heard this guy's name. I don't know anything and whatever. So I so I went out and I voted him and, um, you know, whatever. That's my point. So this was my experience. I voted a few ways, a few different times. But as far as the word liberal, I feel like, you know, that, that, that it's kind of been ruined, man, over there because, you know, when you, you, I don't know if you saw my post today, but when you see guys like Jeffree Star talking about, yo, we've gone too far, you know, yeah, what I mean? yeah. when, you, when you see guys with painted nails and long hair and they, I don't know if they're trans or what's the, what they're calling themselves, but when they're that, when they're like, yo, I think we've, I think we <laughs> <f> up, <laughs> sorry, sorry, yo, I think we messed up. And, um, you know, when that's happened, man, I think we're catering to a very small minority of people it's kind of early on i had a lot of fans that were maybe more conservative or, or or middle of america and working you know very hard working dudes that really have blue collar type of dudes but that's not like i still could go to any city like manhattan and, and i had like a ton of you know uh, young whatever women and men coming out that were like more progressive so like I, I had a really mixed bag of my audience so when i started kind of asking questions i remember like who gave me backlash and who didn't and i remember people just trying to dig up anything on me when i said something weird when i when i wasn't i wasn't even out as anything i wasn't supporting trump i wasn't support i never supported a candidate publicly ever until even the other day until i was like yo trump's my wedding you think i'm not gonna post this because i'm scared of what y'all think <laughs> you think oh i'm so oh, i really am so fearful bro you know what i mean so early on i just noticed that like when i would say something very on just genuinely curious and this is like 2015 2016 2017 when i would say something like hey y'all could y'all explain to me what non-binary is or you know can because this is coming from a dude who has no idea could you please just let me know blah 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 and people be like what do you mean you don't know blah, 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 blah. and i'm like yo no 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 i just asked a question like i just asked a question i was hoping you could answer and a lot of the times it's because people don't know either and they just feel like it's you know they, they find an identity in, in being opposite of conservatives and yeah. you know opposite opposite of Trump or opposite of the nuclear family or the farmer or the hardworking guy or the 2A guy or whatever it is. So people find identities in 